Okay, now it's time to get into the heart of our course. You've already now, by this time, gained a great understanding of the band descriptors. You know what you're supposed to do in regards to your fluency, coherence, lexical ability, grammar range and accuracy, and coherence. In addition to that, you've also been given some general tips and advice that apply to all three sections of the, of the exam. Now, in this lecture, we're going to specifically talk about IELTS speaking part number one. I'm going to explain the section in great detail and give you some very specific tips, advice, and strategies that apply to IELTS speaking part number one. By the end of this lecture, you'll know exactly what you need to do to get a great score on part number one. After this lecture, there's going to be a series of lectures where I'm going to really give you some great sample answers for part number one. So let's get started. First of all, um, there really are kind of two parts to part number one. Uh, we first have the opening questions. And these opening questions are, are questions that almost everyone gets. So they're going to ask, of course, about your name. Are you, are, are you a student or do you have a job? Where do you live sometimes? Normally, this first part would take about two minutes. Then they're going to get into some more specific topic questions that might cover colors, cell phones, plants, hair, wild animals, perfume, voice changes, reading, music, a lot more specific topics. Some of these topics might come out of left field. You might not be prepared for it. And that's, that's on purpose. The reason why is they want to be able to see how well can you handle, how well can you speak uh, spontaneously? Are you able to get a topic that you haven't really thought of or considered? And can you really speak spontaneously and really show a lot of fluency, coherence, great grammar and vocabulary? The total time on part number one is about four to six minutes. Generally, it ranges around five minutes, and the total questions are normally around 12 questions. Now, basically, this is how it starts. There's some variations depending on who the examiner is. But this is basically how the test starts. In the beginning, they're going to go ahead and introduce themselves, ask for your name. Then they're going to say, you know, what can I call you? And you might say something like, I've had many nicknames, but I'm most comfortable with Benny. Now, now, don't really, don't really play around in terms of really giving your name. Don't try to get too cute. Uh, just give your name and move on to the next part. Next, they're going to ask you uh, your origin. Where are you from? Technically, I'm from Benin, but I've lived 19 of my 20 years in Accra, Ghana. Identification. Please show me your identification. No problem. Let me grab my passport, or would you prefer another identification? This is normally how every test will begin, right? It normally will begin this way. Here are some general advice, tips, and strategies that are gonna help you to do really, really well. You know, it's one thing to understand this in your mind, it's another to actually be able to do it under time pressure. That's why simulating the exam, working under a clock, is so important. Sure, you can just practice it or really say, well, I understand what you're talking about. But you have to do it within the context of an exam setting. So the first big piece of advice that I have is general to specific. This is crucial to doing well on part number one. Answer directly and then specifically explain why. The next tip that I'll cover re is in regards to paraphrasing and synonyms. Examiners love when you can paraphrase and use synonyms. Always change the question language. And a final strategy would be to stay on topic and know when to stop speaking. Don't go outside of the subject of the question. This normally happens when you just ramble on, just keep rambling on and on and on. They ask you a question about, do you like music? 
and then you just keep rambling on and eventually start talking about uh, the types of music and start talking about how long you, you know, just really, you know, what kind of music your family likes. You just, you just go on and on and on outside the context of the question. And finally, really set your eyes on the examiner. Know when the examiner is getting ready to ask you a new question. That way you can wrap it up. Wrap up your answer and get ready. Here's some more tips and strategies and advice. You really want to, I'm not going to speak on everything on this list, um, but you really want to highlight and really, I really want to highlight giving mistake-free sentences. Examiners love when you're able to give mistake-free sentences. That means sentences that are free of grammar, word choice, and pronunciation mistakes. If you really want to be the type of student that's scoring eight, nine on your speaking, you have to be able to do this. Smooth sentences. If you're able to go smoothly from beginning to end without the pausing, the hesitation, the ums and the ahs, you help yourself out a lot. Examiners also love topic-specific vocabulary. If they're asking you a question, if they're asking you a question about language, give a lot of specific vocabulary about the, the topic of language. Don't answer in general. Answer with specific vocabulary. Don't pair it. Don't repeat the question. Discourse markers are important, but don't overuse them. Okay, don't overuse them. In some of the examples that I'm going to give you, I'm going to use a lot of discourse markers only because I'm trying to show you how they're used. Okay, I'm trying to show you the, 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 the strategy for using them. But don't, don't try to use one in every single sentence. Don't do that. Sentence variety is very important. If you are only speaking in simple sentences, your grammar score is going to be a five. And answer naturally. Give natural answers. Do not give memorized answers. We can always tell when you're giving a memorized answer. Don't do it. Here are some mistakes that I want you to avoid. Okay. Number one, try to really avoid these filler phrases. Yes, native speakers use these, but most of the time when a, when a, when a non-native speaker does it, it sounds prepared. It sounds like, okay, now it's my turn to go ahead and say, that's an interesting question, so I'm going to say that. It doesn't sound natural. So my, my general advice is just avoid doing it. Watch out for speaking in fragments. I do understand that a lot of times in, in natural speech, students do, I mean, not students, but native speakers speak in fragments. Um, but for you, they're grading your English. So I want you really to use complete sentences, please. P watch out for answering the wrong question. I talked about this a little bit earlier, but you know, you can't just say the topic of the question is food. So I'm just gonna talk about food. And they may have asked you a specific question, like what type of food do you like to eat in what type of food do you like to eat in the evening? So if you start talking about lunch and breakfast items and, and other things, then you're going to get you're, you're going to be marked down for that. Okay? Answer the specific question that you are asked. And finally, avoid being a perfectionist. If you worry about your grammar, Whatever grammar you know when the exam starts is what you have. Don't worry about it. All right? If you do, you can end up messing up your fluency, pronunciation, and coherence marks.